The contractor begins by showing a man named James Harper, a member of the Army's Special Military Forces. James lives happily with his wife, Brian Harper, and has a son who is currently eight years old who he loves very much. Recently, James has been rehabilitating and recovering from treating his knee, severely injured when he was fighting in Afghanistan. A few days later, James was called by military leaders only to find that he was honorably discharged on medical grounds. Not only that, but he will not receive any severance pay on the pretext that all the money has been used to pay for medical treatment, the money he has been undergoing so far. Although James found it hard to leave the military, he couldn't do much to keep the job. After James got home, he told his wife that he had lost his job and received no severance pay. He looked confused because he didn't have enough savings to support them for the next few months while they had a lot of bills to pay. But Brian tries to calm him down, reassuring him that everything will be fine and they will find a solution together. That night, when James was repairing the roof of the house, Brian told him that his best friend, Mason, had died as a result of ending his own life. Mason was James's best friend in the military unit who had also been laid off like James a few months earlier. Brian became very worried and was afraid that James would do the same, but he immediately hugged her and assured her that he would never leave his own family, especially during difficult times like this. The next day, when James attended Mason's funeral, a man named Mike approached him. It turns out that Mike is James' former superior in the Special Forces military unit, but he left the military after he was fired for the same reasons as James. However, their relationship is still good, so Mike invites James to have dinner with his family. Moreover, they had not seen each other for quite a while after Mike moved to a new place. In the evening, James came to Mike's house to attend a dinner invitation while sharing stories about their respective lives. After dinner, Mike and James watched a football game while talking. In that conversation, Mike shared that he works in a private company with higher pay. Hearing this, James asked him for help so that he was allowed to join him in the company because, at this time, James still had not found a new job. Moreover, in the last few days, he was notified to immediately pay bills and other household expenses. The next day, Mike brought James with the boss of the organization where he worked, named Rusty. Before hiring James, Rusty told him that most of the missions of this job were quite dangerous and had a very high risk. With his current financial condition, James had no choice but to take the job and accept all the possible risks. From the conversation between Rusty and James, it is known that Rusty used to be a member of the military like James, but he decided to leave and build his own company. He also said that all missions from his company received permission and direct support from the government so that James did not have to worry about being arrested and carrying out the mission later. After James officially joined, Rusty gave him his first mission, to go to Berlin for a few weeks to spy on someone. After returning home, James informed Brian that he had found a new job that paid quite well, but the job required him to go abroad for about two weeks, and she was forced to agree. The next day, James went to Berlin by plane and stayed in a hotel that had been accommodated by Mike. A few hours after arriving at the hotel, a woman named Katya entered James' room and introduced herself as one of Rusty's men. There, she orders James to spy on a biological scientist named Solom, who is known to have cooperated with terrorist organizations to develop biological weapons. In the evening, after preparing all the equipment needed, James immediately went to do his first mission. He documents all of Solom's activities at home and in the laboratory where Solom conducts research. After tracking Solom's movements and gathering all the information needed for days, James got a message from Katia to go to the base. After arriving at the headquarters, James met with Mike, Katia, and one of the other colleagues named Bobby. Mike explains that Solom is developing a highly lethal biological weapon to sell to major terrorist groups. Their mission is to kill Solom and steal all of his research data regarding the biological weapon from the laboratory. However, the laboratory had a security system connected to a nearby police station, so they had to be careful. As a backup plan in case they were surrounded by the Berlin police, they could run into the forest and through the river tunnels. That night, they prepared all the equipment and weapons they needed before finally leaving for their destination together. After arriving at the location, James and the team began to sneak and knock down the guards one by one, so they could break into the laboratory building. After checking the rooms, they finally found Solom and immediately threatened him to hand over all his research data. Mike then orders Bobby to transfer all the data to their computer while James is assigned to kill Solom. Hearing this, Solom kept begging James not to kill him because he was just a scientist trying to save the lives of millions of people through his research. He also asked James to help secure a copy of his research data in a bank vault that only his wife could open. However, James, who did not believe Solom's words, immediately killed him using a lethal chemical injection. After confirming that Solom was dead, James set fire to the laboratory and engineered it as if he had died in an accident. But when they were about to leave the lab, two police cars surrounded them so a shootout between the police and Mike's troops was unavoidable. 
Unfortunately, Katya and Bobby died in the shootout, and Mike suffered a gunshot wound to the leg. Knowing the situation was getting worse, James immediately carried Mike and took him to the forest so they could hide in the tunnel in the river. After diving for a few minutes, Mike and James rested briefly in a safe location so that James could treat the gunshot wound to Mike's leg. He even had to do a blood transfusion immediately because Mike had lost a lot of blood and was in critical condition. After Mike recovered, they intended to immediately return to base, but James' knee injury suddenly recurred so that he could not stand. He advised Mike to go ahead and hand over the research data to Rusty while he would follow after his leg had recovered. For the sake of the success of their mission, Mike had no choice but to leave James and go to Rusty first to hand over the data. Before he left, Mike ordered James to go to a hotel called Salvana and wait in that hotel until he came back to pick him up. A few hours later, when his knee had recovered, James went to the Salvana Hotel as per Mike's earlier instructions. In the room, James found a passport that Mike had provided beforehand and a message saying he would be coming in six hours. But after waiting a long time, Mike still hadn't arrived, and James felt something was wrong so he decided to leave the hotel. James then calls Rusty to ask about Mike's whereabouts, and Rusty says that their mission has been leaked and some police are starting to hunt them down. He said that Mike never returned to submit the research data, so he assumed that Mike had died on the way. Rusty then ordered James to tell him his location so he could send some people to pick him up. But after seeing the people sent by Rusty, James has a bad feeling and decides not to go with Rusty's men because he thinks that Rusty is the one who killed Mike. And his hunch proved correct. Shortly after James went the other way, Rusty angrily ordered his men to arrest and kill James. After hearing several bullet shots, James ran to save himself from Rusty's men. After a fierce chase, he escaped under the bridge aisle and brought down two of Rusty's men. Before the man died, James had time to ask who had sent them and found that Rusty had sent them to kill him upon pickup. James then sent a short message to Rusty through the man's cell phone so that Rusty thought he was dead. After a long and tiring journey, James rested in the underground station while thinking about his next plan. At that moment, he suddenly remembered Solon's words calmly, the copy of the research data he had hidden in the bank vault. The next day, James came to Solon's house and asked Solon's wife to take a copy of the research data in the bank. At first, Solon's wife refused James' request, but after he threatened to harm her son, she had no choice but to obey his orders. They went to retrieve the data from the bank vault, and then Solon's wife handed the data to James. After getting the data, James immediately went to check what research was done by Solom. After opening the data, he seemed surprised that Solom was just an ordinary scientist. The latter was developing a vaccine formulation to deal with a deadly virus sweeping the world. He intends to distribute the vaccine free of charge to everyone in need, but some parties plan to snatch the vaccine formulation from him to enrich themselves and for their personal gain. After learning this information, James decided to return to America using the passport that had been given by Mike earlier. Arriving in America, James goes to Mike's house to tell Mike's wife that her husband has died. But unexpectedly, it turns out that Mike is still alive, making James think that he has conspired with Rusty to kill him. The next morning, James secretly follows Mike from behind to find out what his real plans are. But apparently, Mike realized this, so he immediately ambushed the people who had been following him all day. When he found out it was James, Mike looked surprised because he got news from Rusty that James had died on a previous mission. And that's why Mike didn't pick him up at the hotel as promised and went to America alone. He never intended to betray James, which meant Rusty was the one who had toyed with them both. On the other hand, James almost kills Mike, who has lied to him about the main purpose of this mission and about the research carried out by Solemn. Mike then advises James not to return home because if Rusty finds out that he is alive, his family will be in danger. Hearing that, James decided to kill Rusty and his men because it was the only way to solve all this. Mike, who feels guilty about James, intends to help him in raiding Rusty's place. That evening, Mike pretends to want to see Rusty, while James will sneak into Rusty's house through the back door. James and Mike started shooting all of Rusty's men one by one until a fierce shootout ensued. After all of Rusty's men were removed, Mike and Rusty shot each other until they both died. After that, James walked over to Rusty, who was already dying and punched him in the head without saying a word. After their plan was completed, James rushed to take Mike to the hospital and saved him, but he died on the way due to severe injuries. The following day, James burned Mike in his car to eliminate the trail before he finally returned to his house to meet his family. After reuniting with his family, James intends to take his wife and his son to leave America and start a new life. The moral that can be learned from this movie is, never to betray those who sacrificed a lot for us.